Hey Divine Ones, it's Latoya Okia, your life coach and your motivational speaker. And I want to welcome y'all to the channel. If you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you can get all your notifications every time I upload a new video to the channel. And I upload every single day to my channel. So I want y'all to make sure that y'all have subscribed. You can click the bell so every time I upload a video, you'll get that notification directly to your phone. I don't want you to miss not one word, okay? So getting right on into the topic for today's video. To those of you that don't know me, as I said, my name is Latoya O'Keel. I am a certified life coach. I'm an author, a mentor, and a motivational speaker. And I mentor and help people find their gifts, find their purpose so that they can be able to kick this thing in beast mode, be on fire for God, live in their purpose, operate in their gifts and bring glory to God's name and everything else in between. Because sometimes you have a lot that you have to deal with before you can even begin to think about your purpose, before you can even begin to think about, you know, why am I here or what can I do? And so those are the two questions that deal with purpose and gifts is what, why am I here and what can I do? But like I said, before you get into all of that, sometimes you, you say, well, Toya, you know, I'm just trying to get through the basic stuff. I'm just trying to figure out the basic stuff. Like why I keep going through this and that in my relationships. Why can't I find peace and happiness as a single woman? You know, I'm still trying to find myself. I'm still trying to, you know, kick this depression. I'm still trying to get past this divorce or give it. So I offer different categories of coaching for the woman that is trying to get into her purpose. Even the man that's trying to get into his purpose, that's trying to operate in his gifts, but you just may be dealing with some other stuff. That's all right. Because I'm going to be talking about one of those things that you may still be dealing with that you may not even be aware that you're dealing with this. Okay? You may not even be aware of it. Because I know when I was in this particular situation, I wasn't even aware. Okay? I wasn't even aware that this was a problem for me until I came into the knowledge of who I truly was in God and until I, you know, began to awaken within my spirit. And then that's when I found out that this was a problem for me. I had no idea that I was addicted to toxicity. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and some of y'all may be like, Toy, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Let me tell you something. You know how we love to say all the time, such and such is toxic. You know, my ex is, was toxic or my boyfriend is toxic. My girlfriend is toxic. My wife is toxic. My husband is toxic. And you know, what I found is that we are really good about don't get mad at me now don't get mad at me i'm telling you the truth <laughs> but one thing that i have found out is that we are really really good at pointing the finger and seeing what what's wrong with somebody else but i'm gonna tell you where it get hard where it gets difficult when you gotta turn that finger on you yeah and that's what this video is about i want you to begin to stop pointing the finger at your toxic ex Stop pointing the finger at this one and that one. Your toxic co-workers, you know, because sometimes we'll be, oh, this is toxic, that is toxic, that's toxic, she toxic, he toxic. But what about you, okay? You may be addicted to toxicity, and I'm going to tell you what I mean by this. Let me tell you what I mean by this. Well, I'm going to just explain it from within myself first, and then you can figure out if this is something that you're dealing with, okay? So I know for me... And I'm going to tell you now, when you wake up to this, when I woke up to this, it made me sick. Like, I, it made me sick within myself. It made me angry with myself. You know, it made me think about a lot of things that went wrong in my past, a lot of relationships that went wrong in my past. And I was just like, dang it, you know, I played a part in that. Because I'm going to tell y'all, it's so easy for us, like I said, to point the finger, <clears throat> point the finger at other people. But turn that finger on yourself. And that's what I began to do. The more I woke up and the more I came into the knowledge of more about God and more about me. And I realized a lot of things that I was doing wrong. And I realized a lot of, you know, things that I, a lot of words that I would speak that were wrong. A lot of ways that I would act, you know, like my personality traits and all this different type of stuff. It was just a hot mess and it was just so toxic. And what I had to understand was... 
that was what I saw when I was growing up. And for many of you, that's may, that may be your situation. This is what I saw when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? I saw, I saw men and women getting into fights. I saw, you know, this on a regular basis. I saw a man going outside a woman's head. I saw a man jumping on, I mean, I, I saw a woman jumping on that man. I saw a woman cussing a man out. I saw a woman, you know, just reading a man from left to right. This is this, and I, and, and, I'm, and I see a man raising his voice at a woman, and I see them, they say they in love. This is what I'm looking at as a child. They say that they are in love, but they argue every day. They argue every day. They fuss every day. They fight every day. They throwing stuff at one another. Well, maybe it wasn't every day, but it was very frequently, okay? It was real. It was very, very frequently that this type of stuff would go down, this type of stuff would happen. The screaming, the yelling, you know what I'm saying? The cussing, the loud talking. I didn't grow up seeing women have a respect for men. And then the men that I saw didn't give the woman much to respect. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it just wasn't, it just wasn't picture perfect. I say that. And so what happened was now that I look back on that and now that I know what I know and I came into the knowledge, like I said, I understand that that was put into me. You know what I'm saying? Like I was conditioned to believe that a, a strong woman is a woman that don't take no jump off of no man. That a strong woman is a woman that give a man a piece of her mind. And I ain't talking about in no respectful way. I'm talking about just, oh yeah, letting them have it. Cuss words and all. She giving him a piece of her mind. She ain't sitting, she ain't just sitting by just letting him, you know, get one up on her, but she actually reading him. She actually, you know what I'm saying? He put hands on her. She put hands back on him. She ain't leave when he would put his hands on her. This is what I saw. They'll be putting hands on one another. And then the next day, it's like it didn't even happen until it happened again. And so all of that type of stuff was put into me. That's what I saw year after year after year growing up. So my mind was conditioned to that. My mind was conditioned to that. And then I did not see a kingdom marriage. I did not see what it's like for, I did not see the version of the Ephesians 5 man loving his wife as Christ loved the church. I did not see the version of the Proverbs 31 woman. You know, I did not see that version of a woman that submitted to her husband. And I did not see that version of a man that had a vision that was big enough for his wife to submit to and was walking in line with his purpose and knew his purpose and had a vision for his life and had a wife that submitted to him to help him to fulfill that vision. And they worked together and, and, you know, be in Christ together and, and live in their purpose together and love each other and be affectionate towards each other and respect each other. I did not see that. And so I didn't realize that all of this stuff was conditioned into me and I was actually addicted to that type of lifestyle. I was addicted to that type of man. I was addicted to them type of people. You know what I'm saying? And it had got to the point where if if you're not fussing at me, if we don't fuss, then what's going on? It must be something going on. It must be something wrong. So if you feel like that, nine times out of ten, you addicted to toxicity. You addicted to it. You, I'm going to tell you, and it be the same stuff that you complain about. You'll go, you'll go book a session with a coach and you'll complain about this stuff in the session with your coach. Oh, I'm so tired of him. I'm so tired of her. You know what I'm saying? They cuss me out. They choke me. They hit me. They do this. They do that. But you're still there. And I want to tell you that you still there because there's a part of you that's addicted to that. There's a part of you in your mind that thinks that that's okay. Because if you knew absolutely 100% that it is not, it is not um right for a man to put his hands on you. It is not right. It is not normal for a man to raise his voice at you. It is not normal for a man to cuss you out. If you knew that 100% within yourself, you wouldn't be there. You wouldn't be there. So if you still there, there's a part of you, I want you to realize this, that there's a part of you that's addicted to toxicity. And I'm going to tell y'all, a lot of people, and this goes for men and women, a lot of people, they want better. They want to get better. They want to have better. 
but they don't realize that they still fighting them demons that were put into them from a child. They still fighting them demons that were conditioned into them. I, I say it to y'all all the time. Repetition is the mother of skill. Repetition is the mother of skill. And that's a bad skill or a good skill. If you want to build a skill for something, you have to re, you have to see it repetitively over and over and over again. You have to do it repetitively over and over and over again. And so that's what's happened with these with a lot of kids growing up. This is what they saw. They saw that toxicity. They grew up in the house with it or either they heard somebody telling them about it. I know for a lot of these men it may be an uncle or a daddy or a brother or somebody in the barbershop that told them about women. You know, they grew up here and, oh, these women ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Woman, a woman is nasty. A woman a, a woman a cheat. A woman gonna do this. A woman gonna do that. And so this man from a child, he been conditioned to believe that women, that there are no good women, that all women cheat. And so that's a toxic trait in him that's there. And he don't even realize that that's been conditioned into him. Thoughts become things and things become spirits. And so that's a spirit that has been, that has grown in him since a child. And it's the same way with a woman. As a woman, as a young girl, you might've been sitting around a whole bunch of aunties, a whole bunch of cousins or, you know, whoever, your grandma, your mama, whoever. And you hear them at the table. You may just be sitting in the living room playing with your baby dolls. You just in your innocence playing with your baby dolls, but you hear these women talking about, yeah, this man, this no good man, you know, he ain't nothing. He can't keep no job. He don't never have no money. And, and this, that, and the third, and, and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. And this man ain't nothing. And you just see these women just belittling men. You see them just talking about this man, like he this big. And even in his face, you see her saying this type of stuff to him in his face. And so what you have to understand is from a little girl sitting there playing with your baby dolls and you watching these women, your subconscious mind is recording all of that. It's recording all of that from a little boy. When you hear a man talk to you about girls, when you hear a man tell you something about a woman and you hear that over and over and over again, you hear somebody say to you, son, you need to get you a man based off of how many girls you get, how many numbers you got, you got how, how many girls you got on your team. Come on now. You know, you're supposed to have more than that. Come on now. You, you see, you, you, he, uh, the boy is learning that from a child. The man is learning that from a child. Those, those thoughts are coming into his mind. And then he's producing from those thoughts. Somebody is speaking it to him, but it's, he's thinking it in his mind. And then he's producing what he heard. And so now that's become a spirit. And so now by the time you meet this man and by the time he meets you, I'm just giving an example. By the time you meet him and he meets you, y'all got toxic spirits. Y'all got toxic spirits that been conditioned into your body, into your mind, into your programming. It's embedded in your subconscious mind. It's in your heart. And every time the Bible says your heart is talking about your subconscious mind. And so that's why the Bible tells us that we have to guard our heart. We have to keep our heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. And what the Bible was telling us is we have to guard our subconscious minds. We have to remember that the subconscious mind is always listening. It's always recording. It's always taking in information. And it's like a big memory bank. And what happens is by the time that little girl and by the time that little boy gets to be about between the ages of five to eight years old, somewhere in there, could be even sooner than that, could be as soon as five to six years old. But around that time, what happens is the subconscious mind closes. It closes. It's still listening. It's still recording. But from the from the the age of birth, from the time that baby is born, even going back to the third trimester when that baby is still in the womb, that baby can hear. The subconscious mind of that baby can hear. So the conversations that are going on from the time that you were in your mother's womb up until the age of five, six, seven, eight years old, your mind been recording all this stuff. You ain't even know it, but your mind been recording all this stuff. It's been taking all this in. It's been taking everything in. And so when a baby is a young child, that baby is 100% subconscious. 
100% subconscious. So if that baby grows up in a house where they speak three languages in that house, guess what? That baby is going to speak three languages. If that baby grows up in a house where they only speak English, then guess what? That baby is going to speak English. And it's because whatever goes into the subconscious mind in the early stages of life, it forms you into the person that you will become. And so this is why I say you got to get the knowledge. You got to get the knowledge. You got to know. See, you don't even know that there's a label that's placed on you. There's a label on you. And you can't see the label because you're still in the box. And that's why I push coaching. And that's why I say that you need to book a session and you need to reach out and book a session with a coach because the coach will be able to look at the box, look at the label and help you see what's on it. Cause you can't see it because you still locked in the box. You don't understand the, the, the relationships that you saw when you were growing up. You don't, you probably don't even think about it. You probably don't even remember it, but your subconscious mind remembers it. It remembers everything. It never forgets. And that's the part of you. That's your heart. That's the part where the issues of life flow from. Meaning that everything about you, the way you are in relationships, the, as a woman, the way you are with men, as a man, the way you are with women, um, you know, the way you are on your job, even down to the foods that you eat, you may don't like, you don't like mustard or you don't like ketchup. You know that? That's, that's all, that's, those are all programs that are running in your subconscious mind because you weren't born like that. You were born with a clean slate. And so all of this came about by what you were by what you were hearing in the first early stages of your life. And so, like I said, when you get to those ages of, you know, between five and eight years old, your subconscious mind closes. So it's no longer taking in information all day long anymore. Now, there are still times where your subconscious mind will open up, but we'll get into that on another video. That's not what this video is about. So your subconscious mind closes when you get between the ages of five and eight years old. So then it says, okay, everything that we've heard up until this point, everything that we've seen up until this point, we're going to keep running this over and over. This is what your subconscious mind does. It keeps running that program over and over and over like a record player. It's like a record player. If y'all know, I know that's, you know, you know, that's not in my generation, but it's a good, it's a, well, I say this for the, for the newer generation. If you were to put this video on loop, if you were to put this video on loop, right click on this video and put it on loop and let it keep playing over and over and over again, that's the way, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's the perfect example of what I'm talking about. By the time you get to that age, between five and eight years old, your subconscious mind closes and it says, okay, we're going to take all of this information that's come in so far and we're just going to keep running this over and over and over again over and over and over again so you think that every day is a new day and that every year is a new year y'all notice y'all know the saying new year new me but it's actually nothing new about you you've been running the same programs and if those programs are toxic then guess what you've been running the same toxic programs from your mind over and over and over again every single day do you not know it's a scientific fact that the majority of your thoughts, over 90% of your thoughts, you think the same thoughts every day? Yeah. <laughs> you think about the same stuff every day. Something may change here and there, but the majority of the time, you thinking the same thoughts every day. And you know why? It's because that record player, that video is playing on loop. It's on loop. It's, it's, when it gets to the end, it start back over and it play all over again. And so these are programs. These are subconscious programs. I know this is deep, but y'all stay with me, okay? <laughs> but these are subconscious programs that are running in your mind. And until you are able to stop the record, stop the video, stop it from playing, it is when you're able to stop it, then that's when you'll be able to take control of your life. But if you, if you're not if you if you haven't come to a point in your life where you can stop it or you reach out to somebody that can help you stop it, those programs, that record player, that video is going to keep running. It's going to keep running. So if you heard women say that type of stuff about men as a little girl in the living room or the kitchen, wherever you were playing with your baby dolls, and you, you look up and you listening, 
to Auntie Nim talk about them no good men, and you see Auntie Nim come in the house with a black eye, you see them come in the house with a busted lip, guess what? And then you see them still be with that man. The next day, you see them still being happy with that man like he ain't did nothing to them. Guess what? That program is still running in your mind. So even though you know it's wrong consciously, subconsciously, there's a part of you that thinks it's okay because that's the way you've been conditioned through repetition. That's the way you've been conditioned over time. So that's how a person ends up being addicted to toxicity. Nobody wants to be addicted to that type of stuff, but that's what happens when you've gone through that and you've seen that over and over and over again. A person can be addicted to depression. Depression is toxic. It's toxic. And you can be addicted to being depressed. You can be addicted to toxicity because depression is when you break it down, it's really nothing but a thought. It's a thought that needs to be brought into captivity. It's a thought that needs to be put on lockdown. And the only person that can put it on lockdown is you. Is you. And so I want you to understand that there are women out there, like I was, that were uh, that's addicted to toxicity. I'm gonna tell y'all. And I know it wasn't, I know it wasn't the particular person that I was with, because I used to think it's him, it's him, it's him. He's toxic. Let me tell you how you know. That you're addicted to toxicity and you got some toxic traits. Excuse me. You got some toxic traits within you. I'm going to tell you how you know. is because you leave that person or that person leave you. Y'all break up. Y'all not together anymore. And then the next person you get with, you find yourself dealing with the same thing with them. You find yourself arguing with them. You find yourself cussing them out. You find yourself cussing them out. Have you ever said, and this goes for men and women. You ever said like... You know, it seemed like I'm with the same person. I know that's the way it was for me. It's like, okay, what's going on? Because it seemed like I'm with the same person. I'm dealing with the same thing that I was dealing with in the last relationship. Or I'm dealing with the same thing that I was dealing with with this man. And I know a, a, with the other man. So I know a lot of men have felt that like that too. I know there's not really a lot of men that watch my videos, but... To if there is a man that's watching. I know you felt that way too. When you get with a new woman, it's like you see some of the same traits in this woman that was in your baby mama or that was in the woman that you was with before. And you like, you have to take a minute and just be like, okay, now what is, what's going on? Is y'all working for the same team or something? Like what's going on? Somebody tell me something, but it's, it's not them. It's you. It's you. See, you running the same programs and see what you have to understand is it's not that person. It's the program that's running in your mind. So if that person was not there, there would be somebody else that you would have in your life that's going to feed that addiction. Until you address the addiction, you're just going to keep finding new people to support it. I'm going to pause there because somebody is getting revelation from that. And I don't want to mess up. I don't want to mess up your moment of revelation. I want you to get all your revelation. So I'm going to pause there. Until you address that addiction to toxicity and those programs that are running subconsciously in your mind, you can leave that no good woman. You can leave that no good man. You can get rid of that baby mama. Well, you can't completely get rid of her because y'all got kids together. You could get rid of that baby daddy, ex-wife, ex-husband, whoever. They could die today, Lord forbid. But they could die today. And guess what? Subconsciously, you are going to search out somebody else to feed that addiction. Because it's not the person. It's the addiction. It's the spirit that's still there. And that spirit is hungry. That toxic spirit is hungry. And the only thing that will feed it, listen to me, the only thing that will feed that hungry, toxic spirit is toxicity. It needs it. That's what it feeds off of. And see, what you don't understand was it was put into you. You didn't choose it. It was put into you from a child. Subconsciously, that's what you saw. It was programmed into you. And now you're addicted to it. So you you can get with a man. Because see, this look, listen, this is what's going to happen if you don't address, if you don't, you know, reach out to somebody, 
get help. This is what's going to happen if you don't address that toxic spirit and that addiction to toxicity. This is what's going to happen. You could run into the woman that's for you, right? You could actually get the woman of your dreams. You could get the man of your dreams. You can meet her. You can meet him. But you'll sabotage it. You will sabotage it. You will find something wrong about that person. You, you, you'll mess it up. You'll mess it up. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, listen to what I'm saying. You will mess it up until you address that spirit, until you work on you, until you heal, until you get the new knowledge and you break those programs that are running in your mind, you will sabotage every relationship with any good person that God has for you. So how do you know that you're addicted to toxicity? You know, a lot of women, if you like me, like say it was the same thing, no matter who I got with, even if it was a good man, even if it was a good man, I just didn't feel right if I went arguing with this man. And I know people are going to come in the comments like, oh, that's never been me. I ain't, a, I'm not that type of woman. I'm not toxic. Well, I've had a good relationship with every man. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to comment that. I ain't here to help the people that don't need help. I'm here to help the people that need help, okay? I'm here to help the woman that's that's still struggling. So if you're not struggling, that's wonderful. That's great. That's wonderful. But you don't you don't have to let you know everybody know that unless it's just really itching at you and you want people to know that. You really don't have to let everybody know that. But I'm here to help the woman that needs help. Cause I heard Tony Gaskin say this, and this is so true. Everybody is the perfect woman in the comments. <laughs> And it's so true. And I get it because you figure this is a public platform and everybody can see your comment. I get it. I understand. But everybody's perfect in the comments. Like nobody, nobody's ever been cheated on. Nobody's ever been lied to. Nobody's ever, you know, been addicted to anything. Nobody, everybody's perfect in the comments. <laughs> I think that's just so funny. <laughs> but I want you to understand if you are like if you, if you if you can identify with some of these things that I've been listing out in this video and I know I took it a little deep but I hope I didn't lose nobody replay this video if you need to but understand how you break the toxicity is you got to reach out you got to get new knowledge you got to get new knowledge that's how you're going to be able to stop that record player from playing over and over and over that's how you're going to be able to take that video off a loop and you can start a new program a program that knows a program that says, you know, that you are worthy of a good relationship, that you deserve good things, that you are happy, that you are loved, that you are whole, that you are healed, that a man is not supposed to cuss you out. That's not normal. That a man is not supposed to choke you out to show you that he loves you. That's not normal. OK, that that a woman, uh, you know, she should not try to pull up at your jaw and and slash your tires and bust your windows out to show that she's crazy about you or to show that she love you. That's not normal. And I seen a meme one time. You know what? I'm going to be honest with y'all. Like I said, in the comments, everybody's perfect. But I'm going to tell you, you can't help nobody and you definitely can't help yourself until you are willing to come out of denial and just be real and be transparent about your stuff. So I'm going to be the first one to admit that I'm not perfect, okay? And that I came from a lot in order to be where I am now. That's what qualifies me is the stuff that I went through and the stuff that I dealt with. So I'm not ashamed to talk about it. But um, I can remember like when I shifted into, you know, my new self, came into my divine self. Again, not perfect, but came into my divine self and came into my per my purpose. I was just looking through my phone and I started cleaning out my phone because <laughs> it was a lot of toxic stuff in my phone. Okay, so I'm cleaning out my phone and I seen this meme. I ran across this meme and the meme said, love is when you stab Bay, <laughs> then drive him to the hospital and he lied about who did it. Now, y'all know that's a hot mess. <laughs> you know that's a hot mess come on now let me read it again love is when you stab bae 
then drive him to the hospital and he lie about who did it. That's the type of stuff I used to have in my phone. And that's the type of stuff that I used to look at all the time. And that's the type of lifestyle that I grew up seeing. I grew up seeing a woman cut a man. You know what I'm saying? I grew up seeing a man knock a woman out. I'm talking about knock her out with the children right there in front of her. Knock her out. And she just get up and dust herself off. Don't say nothing. Just get up, dust herself off, and start back pushing the baby in the stroller. This is the type of stuff that I grew up seeing. And so in my mind, you know, consciously, once I came into my consciousness, because that's what happens when your subconscious mind closes, you then come into consciousness and then you are able to decide what's right and what's wrong. That's how you know, like with a child, when they get between the ages of five and eight, they get between them ages right there. They start realizing, they start asking you them questions like, wait a minute, is it really a Santa Claus? You know, like is Santa Claus really real? Or they may ask you something about the Easter Bunny or the Two Fairy. Because the reason why they questioning that is because now they're coming into their consciousness. They are able to decide what's right and what's wrong and what's real and what's fake. But see, up until that point, they are 100% subconscious. So the subconscious mind does not know what's real and what's fake. It does not know what's right and what's wrong. It only knows what it sees, what it hears, and it plays it back over and over and over again that's what it it gives you what you give it it's like the ground whatever you plant into the ground the ground is going to give you exactly what you planted you're not going to plant apples and grow oranges if you plant apples you're going to you're going to reap apples that's your harvest you're going to get apples and that's the way your subconscious mind is so if you plant toxicity it's not going to give you peace it's not going to give you love, joy, happiness, abundance. If you plant scarcity there, if you grew up here and people say, we broke, we ain't got no money, money don't grow on trees, I can't afford this, I can't afford that, okay, they planted scarcity in your mind. So when you plant scarcity, your subconscious mind says, okay, that's what we're going to give you back. It's gonna, we're going to give you scarcity. So you grow up thinking that there's not enough for you. In anything, you think that there's no good men out there for you. There's no good women out there for you. That's a scarcity mindset. And that's something that was put into you as a child. That's a toxic spirit that was placed into you as a child. And until you address it, you will never be abundant. You will never be successful. That's why your businesses, I don't care how many businesses you try to start, they will continue to fail. Because that spirit is still laying in your subconscious mind that says, Money is hard to come by. You got to work hard to make a lot of money. No, you don't. No, you don't. When you look at the people that make a lot of money, they do not work hard. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. They do not work hard. They work smart, but they don't work hard. So these are, you know, just spirits. These are toxic traits that were placed into you as a child. And what happens? You grow up. When you come into consciousness, you're able to decide what's right and what's wrong. You know what you want. You know what's right for your life, but you don't know how to get it. And, and you ever talk to somebody, I talk to people all the time, and they'll say, well, Toya, I know what I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? I know what to do, but I just can't do it. I know what I'm supposed to do, but it's just like I can't do it. I can't, I'm not motivated, or I can't stay consistent, or you know, I just, I know what I need to do, but why is it that I can't do it? And I'm telling you, that's exactly why. It's because there's a part of you that's still addicted to toxicity. There's a part of you that's still addicted to that stuff that you heard when you were coming up. And some of y'all may say, well, I ain't hear none of that stuff when I was coming up. I know I had, you don't know what you heard. You don't know what you heard. Do can you remember what you heard when you were two years old? I'm just saying. Can you remember what you heard when you were sitting in the high chair in the kitchen, in your mama's kitchen, and you were six months old eating baby food? Can you tell me what you heard? No, you cannot. So you don't know what was spoken around you. You don't know what you heard on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't know. You don't know what kind of conversations. You don't know what you saw. Because this goes for what you saw and for what you heard. So you a baby, you sitting in the high chair, your daddy could have came in there and just knocked your mama upside her head. And she fell out and just got up and went right back to feeding you your baby food. And you just sitting there. 
in your baby food, you don't even know what's going on. You, you ain't even know that we're wrong. Why? Because you are 100% subconscious mind at that point. And as I said, the subconscious does not know what's real, what's fake, what's right, what's wrong. It only, it only watches and listens and records. And then when it gets to that certain age, between five and eight, it cut off. It cut off and it say, everything we done heard and saw, this is what we're going to keep running from here on out. I don't care if you're 60 years old, you still running programs from when you were two. I don't care if you're 80 years old. If you have not addressed it, you still running programs subconsciously that, that were put into you from the age of a baby. So this is the knowledge. This is the knowledge. I'm telling y'all, when you get the knowledge, it makes you powerful. Because ever since I got this knowledge and ever since I applied it to my life and I learned, and I'm not telling you some hocus pocus, scientific mess. I'm telling you what's real. I'm telling you what's real. I'm telling you that this knowledge is real because I applied it to my life and it changed my life. It shifted my life because I broke the paradigm. I shifted the paradigm and it changed my life. And so I want you to understand that screaming, yelling, getting punched in the eye, getting choked out. A lot of women think if a man don't choke them, he don't love them. A lot of women think if he don't, if he don't, if he don't question you about where you going when you get dressed, he don't really love you. If he don't, if he don't pull up at your job or he don't, you know, act jealous and act, you know, call you where you at, who you with, what you doing? Oh, girl, he love me so much. <laughs> he love me so much. He, I can't even leave the house, girl. He be, no, that's toxic. That's toxic. Girl, he just, he just like to, you know, he just like to put his hands on me sometimes, you know. He don't really mean nothing, you know. Yeah, he called me, he called me a B sometimes, but, you know, he just be, you know, just dealing with this stuff from his job. He have a lot of stress on him from his job. Listen, I done made the excuses, I know. Um, He got a lot of stress on him from his job, and, you know, he ain't really making the money he want to be making and stuff. And then I shouldn't have said what I said to him. So, you know, when I said that type of stuff to him, listen, don't make excuses. Don't make excuses. Get off the get off the train today. I'm telling you what's going on. There's a subconscious part of you that thinks that that's okay. Even though consciously you know it's wrong and you know you should have left a long time ago. You know you should have been done with that woman a long time ago. Something in you is still calling you to that. For one, it's the soul tie. And then for two, it's that toxicity that you're still addicted to. There's a lot of men, they want a good woman, but they still rolling with the, it's kind of like the Chick-fil-A and the Popeye's <laughs> analysis. And I was telling somebody about this, and I'm going to use this on the video that I'm speaking to y'all on today. It's like the Chick-fil-A and the Popeye's analysis. You been dealing with Popeye's, you know Popeye's ain't no good for you. You know, it going to run up your blood pressure, all that grease in that chicken, but it's good. It's good and it's crispy and it hit the spot. But you start looking at Chick-fil-A and you like, hmm, Chick-fil-A, you know, they have nice customer service. They're always on time with my food. My food is always prepared so nicely. They always say my pleasure. And, you know, and then Popeye's be like, what you want? All right, pull the rind. And you be like, I can't stand them. But you still going and you still eating that chicken. And so that's what I say about a lot of men. Like, you want Miss Chick-fil-A? You want her? For, the, for, you know, just the peace. Because you know you're going to be peaceful with this woman. You know this woman is going to speak life into you. She's going to be everything you need spiritually. But you still attracted to Miss Popeyes. Because even though Miss Popeyes is gutter, <laughs> ratchet, don't care, going to cuss you out, going to pull up at your jaw, going to go off on you. She going to dump your clothes out there in front of everybody. She going to tell you, don't you never call me no more in front of everybody. She going to tell you, don't you never come to my house. Don't you touch me no more. She going to push you. She going to hit you. She going to slap you. She going to do everything to try to make you hit her because she feel like if you don't hit her, you don't love her. And then she push you and push you and push you till one day you been a jumped on her and then you end up down there at the jail. Now you in the jail. Because you was addicted to Miss Popeyes. You was addicted to that toxicity. Now you're in the jail cell. Mm-hmm. 
No, either she done cut you and then put you in the car and then she gonna drive you to the hospital like, like that meme said. Then you get in there in the hospital and no folk looking at y'all. They know y'all lying and you sitting in there talking about, you know, somebody broke in the house and cut me. I was trying to defend my family and somebody broke in the house and cut me. And you know you lying. You know that woman cut you. <laughs> and you get bandaged up. You get packaged up and everything. And then y'all go back to the house. Like it ain't even happen. She in the kitchen the next day. You want something to eat? You want some breakfast? You see what I'm saying? And, and so that's what's going on with a lot of men. A lot of women too. A lot of women too. They talk about they want Boaz. They want Boaz. Yeah, you want Boaz, but you still dealing with the other dude. You still dealing with the toxic dude. You talk about you want the man, you want that Russell Wilson type of man, but you still addicted to that man that go outside your head. You still addicted to that man that cuss you out. You still addicted to that man that raising his voice at you. You still addicted to that man that think all women cheat. And he don't even like women for real. You see what I'm saying? Addicted to that toxicity. And I'm telling you, if you don't address it, if you don't heal it, it's going to ruin your life. It's going to ruin your life and it will, you will sabotage every relationship. You will sabotage every single relationship that you get into. You will mess it up. You will find something about that relationship. You will find something about it. So understand that when a person yells at you, when they try to fight you, when you get punched on, they punching you, they giving you black eyes. They choking you out. You know, you getting slapped all upside the head. Man and woman, that's not love. That's not love. A lot of men say, if she don't pull up at my job and, you know what I'm saying, she don't pull up at the club and go off on me in front of everybody, I don't, I don't deal with, I don't want her. I don't want her. Or he may pretend to everybody like, oh, I'm so sick and tired of this woman. I'm through with this woman. I'm a lady woman. I'm tired of her showing out on me. I'm tired of her bleaching my clothes. I'm tired of her, you know, following me Ryan. She won't leave me alone. Every time I try to leave her alone, she come follow me. She come, you saying that, but you know you like that stuff. <laughs> you know you like that stuff. And you, the reason why you like that stuff because you still dealing with that woman. You still dealing with her. And you know why you still dealing with her? Because you have not dealt with that toxic spirit. You have not dealt with that toxic program that's still running in your mind. So until you deal with it, you're going to keep going back to that person. And if that person was to die today, Lord forbid, you make it seem like it's that person. And if they was to get their stuff together, you would be all right. Or if they was to do this, or if they was to do that, it ain't got nothing to do with that person. It's you. Because if that person was gone today, you would find somebody else. Not even realizing it. You don't even realize it because it's done subconsciously. You're not even consciously aware that that's what you're doing. So you'll get with the next person and complain about them and not realize that it's not them. It's you. It's you. You're going you're, you're gonna to subconsciously seek out that spirit that's in you. It's seeking out more prey. It's seeking out more food to eat because the only thing that's going to fill it up is toxicity. So that's why every time you try to hear the word of God, you try to say, okay, I'm finna start listening to God's word. I'm finna start listening to Toya. I'm gonna listen to her videos. You know, Toya be talking some real stuff. She be keeping us motivated and stuff. So I'm gonna listen to Toya. You know, I'm keep tuning in to the divine ones, listening to Toya. But no matter nothing I say can't keep you in line. And the reason why nothing I say can keep you in line is because that spirit is still there. That program is still running. And that program, that spirit don't want to hear nothing but something toxic. It want to get around some toxic mess. And then when you get around them, it's like you, your body give you this release. I'm telling you, 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 that's how you know you're addicted to it. Because when you get you, you, when you get from around them, when you finally free from them, something in your mind be telling you to call them, text them, ride by them, go by them. Uh-huh. And you know this woman ain't no good for you. Or you know this man ain't no good for you. And something in your mind telling you, go ride by there one time. Go see. Go see. Uh-huh. That's that spirit. I'm telling you, that's that spirit. It it wants, it, it's ready to eat. And see, every time you try to get away from that person, you starve that spirit. It, it, it pull on you even more. And the only thing that's going to feed it is that toxicity. And when you get with that person, you get with that toxic person, which really isn't toxic. It's really you. 
okay? Because you attract who you are. You just looking for somebody to feed what's already in you. Catch that. Somebody going to miss it. Catch that. It's not the other person. Listen, even if it's a man that's putting his hands on you, if you ain't left him and you still there, it's you. I know some people going to get mad at me, but I'm telling you the truth now. It's you. It's something that's in you. Because if it was not that man, it would be another man. Because that spirit, that toxic spirit, it needs to be fed. Until you get it out. Until you get it out of you. The Bible says, how can you uh, enter into a man's house and steal his goods, spoil his goods, except you first bind the strong man? You got to bind the strong man. In order for me to come in and help you, that strong man got to be bound first. You got to that, bind that strong man. Bind that toxic spirit. And how you going to do that? You got to starve it. You got to starve it until it die. Meaning that you got to get away from everything toxic. And you got to start feeding your mind with new knowledge. You got to start. It's going to be hard. As you step into the river of change, it's going to be very hard. Because it was hard for me, baby. Them spirits in me cried out so, ooh. Oh my God, I went through weeks of just crying and begging God, please help me. What's going on? Uh-huh. That's because I had to starve them spirits in me. Mm-hmm. Them toxic spirits. I had to starve them. And when I was starving them, baby, they were crying out. That's what's crying in you. It's that spirit that want to be fed. But you got you to gotta starve it to death because anything you don't feed will die. Listen to me. Anything you do not feed will die. It's still there because you're still feeding it. You're still calling that person. You're still texting that person. You're still riding by the sim. You're still playing music that reminds you of them. See, all that type of stuff is feeding that spirit. You got to starve it. Glory be to God. Starve that thing. And then it'll eventually die. And then you can take your power back. You can reclaim your life. You can get off the, get off the replay. Because that record going to keep playing until you stop it. Okay? So I love y'all so much. I pray this word falls on good ground and you not be afraid to reach out and get help because you're going to have to get help, okay? Because I had to get help. Until somebody shook me and woke me up, I didn't even realize that I was asleep. It took somebody else, yeah, for me, for Latoya O'Kill, it took somebody else to wake me up. And ever since I woke up, I said I'm going to spend the rest of my life waking up the rest of God's people. If they won't help, I said, God, I'm here to help them. But you got to reach out for the help. You got to reach out for the help. You got to book the session. You can sign up for the promo package. You can save money and book the promo package. I would suggest the promo package because it is going to take more than one session. Listen to me. It's going to take more than one session for you to get the knowledge, for you to get the training, for you to be able to educate yourself enough to bind this strong man, to bind this spirit, to stop it today, okay? Because this thing is controlling everything about you. It's the reason why you only make a certain amount of money. It's the reason why you don't believe in yourself. It's the reason why you're depressed. It's the reason why you're angry. You snap at your children. You snap at your family members, at your coworkers. It's because of that toxic spirit that's running in you over and over again, okay? So reach out today. Click the link in the description of this video, okay? Book a session. But like I said, I suggest that you book that promo package because that will lock you in for four sessions and then you can save money when you book the sessions all at one time, okay? You'll save money. So don't be afraid to invest because I had to invest, y'all. I'm telling y'all what I had to do because I know this works. I had to invest. And when I stopped, you know, when I decided that I wanted to come out of that scarcity mindset, because I'm telling you, that's the reason why a lot of people will not invest in a session. They will not book a session because they're still operating from that scarcity mindset. They feel like the money that they have, they only have so much that there's not enough for them to, to spend money on things like that. And they feel like there's just not enough money. They, they need their money. They got to hold on to their money. That's a toxic spirit. That was put into you from a child. That scarcity was put into you from a child. You grew up seeing people hold on to their money. Stingy. Afraid to let go of their money. Afraid to believe in themselves. Afraid to invest into themselves. Not confident. You grew up seeing that. And now that's what you're doing now to this day. 
So you got to reach out. You got to break the cycle. You got to break the generational curse so that your children don't have to live with that. Okay. So I love y'all. Like I said, don't be afraid. Click the link in the description today. Book your session. I'm waiting. I'm here. I'm ready to help you. I'm ready to help you. I was addicted to toxicity. So it's normal. A lot of people are not even aware of it. Okay. But once I shift it from that, it changes everything, y'all. It changes your financial life, changes your family life. It changes changes your health and your fitness. It changes uh, your love life, your life with your friendships, your life with your purpose, your gifts. You find talents in you that you didn't even know you had. Transformational. It is absolutely transformational. Okay, but you gotta you gotta reach out, you gotta get the help. I can't tell you no other way. You cannot read the label if you're still locked inside the box. It's gonna take somebody that is no longer in the box to look at that label and help you see what's going on in your life. Okay, so I love you so much. Click the link in the description, book your session today, okay, and don't be afraid to invest and reach out. I'm telling you, it's gonna be the best thing that you could have ever done for yourself. So I am Latoya O'Keel, your life coach and your motivational speaker. I love you with a divine love. Remember what I always tell you, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. With God, all things are possible. I will check in with y'all next time.